Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's a, it's a very sad day for all of us. Yeah. It's been quite a very sad moment. The, the very minute we got to know that finally the body of, uh, of our compatriot, uh, the great footballer Chu, had been found in Turkey. But we know that it's now uh, arrived here. And uh, George, what a sad day for us. Mm. I can't contain this, honestly. Yesterday, when the body, you know, arrived at the airport, I was like, come on. This is someone who used to fly business class. And yesterday, it was just mortal remains. Come yeah. on. He came Let's in as fly. a cargo. It's a... Uh, I don't know. You know, sometimes hmm. it's gotten me to go off social media for the last, I believe, 48 hours. Mm. Because it's everything that tells you that, I mean, human beings would have to know that life is fleeting. Yeah. And sometimes it's a bit difficult. It is. It is. And, and you know, the whole confusion and back and forth about whether he had been found, whether he hadn't been found, I think that also um, just made things a bit more difficult for everyone, you know, because it's like our hopes were shattered at mm. that point when they said mm. that was a mistaken identity. Mm. And mm. we all kept asking, what's being done for him? Um, why has he not been found yet? And it's just heartbreaking that at the point when we're all praying that we'll find him, mm. because we had found people, or they had found people who were still alive in the exactly, rubble. Bella. What, a week after? So, I mean, why could we not find him alive? Hmm. It's just heartbreaking. So, uh, like yesterday, a, a friend of mine family, posted something on, on Instagram. You know, he's someone that doesn't believe in God. But I almost, you know... You mean your friend? agreed with him, because it was like, this is someone who feeds a lot of people, widows, just to talk about a few of them. But why did God let this guy die? You know, why didn't God come through for him? And I almost had to agree with my friend, but I was like, come on. Please don't. That's yeah, why the yeah. Bible says that for his you know, ways better. are not our yeah, ways and his better. thoughts are not our thoughts. And so, sure. I mean, we all question God. And at this point, I, I, I follow another person who lost her boyfriend, a.k.a. was gunned down in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And his girlfriend, Nadia, finally posted something yesterday after he was buried. And she was like, she's questioning God because she doesn't understand how, you know, they had such a good life together and he's passed. And I, sometimes we tend to do that a lot. But no exactly matter what better. we do, we will never understand why God's that reason. decision was made yeah. by God yeah. or whoever. We can just thank him for whatever it is. I mean, this is a tough time for his family. And at this point, we can just... Pray that his family stays strong. Exactly. I mean, everybody would express their feelings and their emotions at this point, and rightly so, for all the good things that he's done. Why exactly. could such a thing happen to him? But only God understands why he would take us <sighs> at one point or the other. So, it's it's tough, but I'm sure we'll get over it. Bella, and to I'm know sure that we'll he did it. some benevolent acts that you know wasn't even captured on camera. It wasn't even the public yeah. domain. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Hmm. It is oh well. Uh, you know, his, his twin sister had to go all the way to Turkey. Sure, sure. With his brother, I'm yeah, told. Yeah, and yeah. then one sister was left behind yeah, here. Yeah, And so they and came with the ambassador. You know, to think that they traveled all the way hoping that they would find him alive. And I, I don't subscribe to anybody who shared those gory photos of him and how he was found. Yeah. But if you even look at that. He really suffered. Oh. Bella, he really suffered. Oh. He really suffered. It's, I think, it's I, I, sad. I think that twin sister actually lives in the UK. So oh, she lives in the UK, yeah, okay. lives in the UK alongside him. Uh, oh. Not the same place, but just also lives in Because the that's UK. where his family lives, apparently, right? Yeah, he, he, his family, they live in, New, is it Newcastle or one of those okay. places? Okay, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Because that's where he initially uh, but felt But I, I, I well learned uh, mm. their, their divorce or something, and the wife. Well, that's that the doesn't material really matter. to the discussion. Mm, yeah. He has kids with her. Yeah. I mean, at this I th point. I, I think the, the, the reality of Achu's death also um, brings the, um, the extent to which the enormity of the earthquake really has hit exactly. many people. Yeah. Um, for example, apart from Achu, the Turkish national team goalkeeper also mm. passed yeah. on yeah. early in the times. And they still even haven't found his team director. Okay. Uh, we're told that he had wanted to leave the team, but scored. Nah. And even actually that night, was apparently he had, well, had also wanted to go back to England to yes, see his children kids, yeah. and, and the partner. So it, it makes it quite difficult. Over 44,000 people losing their lives in this earthquake uh, in Turkey and Syria just uh, shows us that, look, uh, um, you cannot always be disaster prepared. You can't try to Relax. be disaster prepared. You can prepared. only try.
Mm. You know, so, so, so we'll see how it goes. So the thing then is, if we cannot always be disaster prepared, the things that are within our reach, <laughs> what can we do about them? You know, it's good that the state is taking care of many of the exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. But it's the family and the rest of the football fraternity, and indeed, right now, everybody else who is grieving. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll take a spot of music at this point. When we get back, we'll connect with Kelvin. Kelvin also has did an interview with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a very well, widely yeah, spread interview exactly. subsequently. We'll yeah. speak to him shortly. Mm. Don't go anywhere. Sure. Can you hear us? Maybe you might have to unmute right yourself. Yes. A very solemn morning it is. And um, it's not the news that we're all hoping to hear um, when we're hoping that he would be found alive. But here we are. And this is thus far, Lord has brought us. But what do you say, um, or what is your fondest memory of him? Well, um, Bella, thank you. Um, I think there are so many fond memories of Christian Archer that I would, I would always have in mind. And especially on his debut game back in Kumasi in 2012 against Lesotho, when um, Coach Kwesiapia was then the head coach of the team, introduced mm -hmm. him had an excellent game and many were wondering where is this player coming from you know he did not have a great time on the local scene because he played for an academy for um, cheetah and then for final which is now wafa mm. before moving out and even in 2015 uh, the africa cup of nations uh, when avram grant was in charge of the national team yeah actually was injured before the tournament but avram grant insisted that this is a player who can get fit before the tournament. So I am going to take him to Equatorial Guinea, which he insisted that indeed provided a personal trainer and then some medics uh, at the cost of the GFA, but he recommended them that they were going to get a true fit in time. Lo and behold, a true managed to get fit, run through the entire tournament, became player of the tournament, scored a magnificent goal which was a judge goal of the tournament and helped Ghana reach the final, which eventually we lost to uh, Cote d'Ivoire on penalties. So this is, this is a player who gives you so much more to remember, both um, club side and then uh, even for the national team, at least not the greatest um, of, um, do I say, laurels to, to, to hold on to, but for the many times or the few times that he featured for the national team and even on club side, he made sure that he gave his best. Those two memories from the 2012 Lesotho game and the AFCON, the entire AFCON tournament in 2015, makes me love Christian Achu the more any time I hear of him. How is the football fraternity, especially in Ghana, um, taking this? I mean, yesterday and two days ago, we saw that Newcastle paid homage to him. Chelsea as well paid homage to him. Um, Kudus, when he scored as well, um, broke the rules of the game and took off his you know, jersey just to pay condolences to him as well. How is the entire football fraternity taking it? Well, Bella, it's been a very big blow, a very huge blow to the entire football fraternity. Uh, for many who loved Achu, he wasn't a player you'd have so many controversies around. You wouldn't mm. have any negatives to spread about him. But it was all positives because he is not someone who would have any issues surrounding him, like mm. disrespect, like giving less of what he can offer for the national team. No. So everyone has been hit so hard, very hard, especially... Um, the lot uh, who know about the many things he does off the pitch. He's someone who loves everybody, wouldn't say no to an interview. If he's going to say no, he would have the new reasons for denying or declining an interview. Mm. And every time that he came out, he made sure that he had a relationship with everyone, more like a brother or a sister. So every single person loves him so much. And you know, during 2015, I remember when the Black Stars were in that particular tournament. That was the time where a lot of jokes and then a sarcastic comments had, had been on social media. So we decided to have skits of it together with Jonathan Mensah, Asamoichan, Mubarak, Wakasu. They gave video clips that gave us a lot of joy because during their time in camp, they would just share a few jokes. They would make skits where... 
they'll be just a bit sarcastic towards each other for silly questioning or answering of certain things and it it's it was it was just so much of, of a joy to see him so you know once it happened his closest friend Mubarak Kwakasu just made everyone tea especially for me on Saturday as soon as I saw the news the first thing was going to Wakasu's social media handles and mm. we just saw him tweet to rest well with with the uh, crying emoji and um, the dove and it was it was like no come on someone should check on Wakasu so we just sent a text to um, one of his friends he played with uh, from Wafa, hmm. Felix, and, and, and Felix was in tears already. So I just dropped the call. And the next thing I saw was videos from a Samoa Jan uploading and then sharing so many disappointing moments. And it took a lot of the Black Stars players some time hmm. to post it. And even for the top officials, uh, team managers, and then coaches who worked with them, all because they could not believe that such a wonderful soul had to endure this and leave the earth at a moment where he meant every single penny mm. to everyone. And as we talk about the effect he had on, you know, his team, his fellow players, many people are now finding out that he was equally, um, you know, benevolent to the rest of us. I mean, a lot of people, there's a Nigerian comedian who even came out and said, he just asked the Chu to help him pay for his fees, and he promised to pay till he was done, and he actually did that. We're told that he did a lot of work in the prisons as well. Give us a recount of some of the things that he did just to touch the lives of people outside of the football fraternity. Well, I think Achu, Achu did so well. First of all, he had that heart to make sure that as a kid where he did not enjoy so much, he made sure that the kids, especially where he came from, Senya Breku, enjoyed um, some good education and the good facilities. So he reached out to Arms Around the Child, which is um, an organization that takes care of the well-being of children across the world. And mm. they put up a school to make sure that uh, the kids or the children in Senyabriku enjoy the best of facilities and best of education. That was one thing he did. And also he made sure that Prisoners, um, uh, some prisoners who could have been avoided, who could have avoided prison sentence all because of petty fines and then um, issues that he could have been released from, made sure that they enjoyed it. I remember a 61 uh, year old at that time that um, actually ensured that he paid for all the um, damages that the person had to pay in order to relieve the person from prison. And even after that, all the single um, uh, people who were willing or did not have livelihood after leaving the prisons, he made sure that he provided some sort of um, um, livelihood for them by giving them some money to start up businesses and all that. So it was, it was, he was just a phenomenal person in, in that particular aspect. And I know there were some local footballers that who could not afford football boots. They couldn't even purchase football boots. Actually, at the end of every single season, brought football boots, over 500 pairs of them, hmm. to share to footballers in the country, regardless who you are, regardless where you play. And, you know, a number of players benefited from it. There were times that many reached out to him and he wholeheartedly bought new quality football boots and then he gave them out. I recount one of a friend, um, Eric Donko, formerly of Asante Kotoko, and then Ash Gould and Ken Faisal, one time spoke about Achu gifting him two pairs of brand new boots, all because he was really uh, pleased with the way he, 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 he played football on the pitch, and all because he couldn't afford the best of cleats. You know, a part of the world, players use any cleats that they want for football, but mm. he actually bought cleats that could survive the test of time because of our, the poor nature of our pitches. So yeah. it went all around and just like you mentioned that he paid for the fees of um, the Nigerian comedian. It wasn't just him. There were so many others. I'm sure several uh, our colleagues um, have, have benefited from some of these gestures because even myself, after my interview with him, there were times he would just um, slide into the DM and then he would text you, gentlemen, you are doing good. How are you? Hope everything is fine. How is mm. work and all that. So he, outside the things that he did, he was just a proper human being, I should say, because 
he wanted the best for every single person he, he came into uh, communication or association with. How is his immediate family taking this? His wife, and I don't know if he has two or three children. We just saw photos of three, so I'm not sure which is which. Well, he has, he has three. Three he children. Has three. Have we heard from them years. beyond making an appearance in the stadium when he was celebrated? Have we heard from them? Because I'm sure a lot of people expected that they would also be in the country by now um, since his body arrived. Well, um, I, I haven't heard any news. Yesterday when we went to the Kotoka International Airport um, to welcome his mortal remains, I made contact with the Football Association and also the Ministry and uh, the um, ambassador to Turkey's representative, and he made it. Uh, they made it clear that they've been in constant communication with Achu's family, and um, it was it was just um, a difficult time for them to fly back here for uh, this. But they've made sure that they are in good condition, and uh, the club Newcastle United have also provided support and then uh, some sort of um, psychological. Um, um, treatment to make mm. sure that the family, the wife, and then the kids are in very good condition. And the yeah. reason why you saw them at the St. James's Park um, uh, during Newcastle's game against Liverpool to make sure that they are very okay and they mm. will keep uh, communication with them as to when they can bring them down for um, the final funeral rites when everything is sorted. So it's not like they've let them out of everything that is being uh, done by the family and then the government. For his immediate family, you could, you could feel the, the impact yesterday when um, his sister, his twin, was, was just passing by. She was in tears. She just couldn't hold it. So yeah. one of the family members had to just move her out of sight quickly as soon as the um, uh, event ended. Yes. And for the brother, he was a bit stronger, but you could see very red eyes for most mm. of the family members who were close to him couldn't stand it even for for onlookers some journalists had to shed tears and it was it was just too much to 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 hold yesterday i just hope that everybody would just pick up the strength and then we wish him the very best mm. of rest at the bosom of our lord Amen to that. And finally, are there any further announcements beyond government um, yesterday saying that they were also going to take over and support the family every way possible to give him a befitting burial? Do we have dates? Do we know what decisions have been made yet? Well, um, there aren't any dates yet. And the um, Deputy Minister of um, Sports, uh, Youth and Sports, um, Ivan Sopoku Bibi, spoke to us and he made it clear that um, they are going to reach out to the family because um, regardless um, that the government wants to take charge of all, um, everything regarding the, the, the funeral, they would want the family to have a suitable date for them where they want to lay to rest their own before the government takes charge of it. And Kroger Ponkoma and the Honorable Minister for Information also made it clear that yes, they would wait for the family to make uh, their final decisions on when they would want to have the final burial rights before um, they make um, everything started. But for now, um, it's just uh, the body which is in very good custody of the state and then uh, the family will just finalize everything. And once they lease with the government, who would have the appropriate date um, which will be communicated through the Ghana Football Association. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Kelvin, for speaking to us this morning. Talk Thanks for having me. Yeah. It is heartbreaking. But may he continue to rest in peace. And we'll keep you updated and apprised as we move along if we hear anything from the sports department, from government, or from our news team. Paparo, you want to say anything? Um, just the last week, I, I met uh, one of his playmates in his um, early course days before he went to play for the academy or got enrolled into the academy Fireoid. Mm. And he was just saying that he was just around his age because the gentleman said he'll be 30 this year. Mm. So I asked him, ah, so he's not an over age footballer. I said, no, mm. they're all playing together. They happen to have better skills, also got noticed um, by the scout, mm. and so went to play for Fire as at the academy and so onwardly. And that yeah. also meant that you, you go to Holland, Holland and then subsequently you go apply your trade. Mm. Um, we know that he's played for some great teams, but 
uh, his agent's ability to be able to sign in home to Chelsea, yeah. even though everybody knew that he wouldn't get the playing time, was yeah. the big thing. Yeah. Because it means that if you're exposed to the Premier League, at least you go play for Newcastle, that's even bigger. That's bigger yeah. And uh, it's, it's sad that you look at the, the way the family has taken it, it also epitomizes that a great tree has fallen. He is yeah. the eye of the family. He is. He is the one who is their biggest breadwinner, if not the breadwinner. Mm. Um, I'm sure he's changed the lives of members of the, of, of the family. And so um, many of us may not know him personally, but, yeah. but his um, exploits on the field uh, brought him closer to us. Mm -hmm. But even worse is the nature and how he died. Exactly. And you can think of the few minutes before he passed, um, all those times how he was waiting for help. Yeah. And just helpless he was. It's, it just shows you that life is fleeting. It is. But anyway, uh, keep your messages coming in. The whole show it will be dedicated, of course, to the celebration of his life. But let's go straight into Johnny's Bites now.